Hi everyone, Adrian here over at The Samplist. We have something a little bit different and special for you today. 10 Phantom Rooms has released a new library called Low End Toys. This library focuses on acoustic, mechanical, electric and electronic toys alongside toy instruments from 1900 through to 2024. Captured with high frequency microphones and pitching those recordings down two or even three octaves creates slow motion sonics. 10 Phantom Rooms is a group of musicians that are creating a total of 10 rooms of instruments over the next few years. We have Tobias Mengusa who spent 30 years in sound design and worked for many of industry's big names, Paul Haslinger who is a film composer and electronic artist and actually played in one of my all time favourite groups Tangerine Dream. And we also have Peter Bauman, an electronic artist who also featured in Tangerine Dream. You can guarantee that whatever is produced will be of quality and add another sonic tool to your sound arsenal. Low End Toys is priced at 99 euros and if you subscribe to their newsletter you get a 25 euro voucher that can be used against this instrument. You will need the latest version of either the free contact player or the full version of contact 7 and around 3.17 gig of disk space. Naturally the more memory you have the smoother the experience and this goes for any sample based instrument. Each patch comes with three variations spread across four individual layers. With over 160 patches to play with let's take a listen to some of the sounds from this library.
Okay, so that's what uh, this library sounds like. Absolute amazing sounds. We have this interface here with uh, all the graphic movements, and if you want to turn this off, but for me, why would you? Because it does look quite intriguing to say the least, but you can actually turn it off by just clicking this button, button in the bottom right hand corner here, turn it off, and it'll just freeze it, literally freeze it where you, you know, where the animation is at that point. For the purposes of this demonstration, I'm just going to turn it off so we don't detract from where I'm actually going with this wonderful little mouse. So on the left hand side here, we have the different variations that you can go through um, for each sound. So when you set up a variation, you can just click on these A, B, C, and as you see, it moves the macros at the bottom. I just bring up a different sound actually. I bring up the uh, deep space low end because this shows that it, your volume levels actually move in each one. So every time you set up a variation, all you need to do is click on this little square here and it'll save it to that slot. Now you can move through the variations by just clicking on the names or as I was doing in the walkthrough, move through the variations with your mod wheel which allows you to sort of like get halfway house with them if you see those move slowly as a bring them into the, each variation and then you can actually get the mod wheel to do different things if you click on this little hamburger in the bottom here you can attach the mod wheel to let's say space as well so when i move my mod wheel it will move space so you can only select one source at a time. Uh, you can't select more than one. Across here we have each sample layer. So we've got four sample layers to play with. So if your sound doesn't sort of like come across to you as it's too full, there's too much going on, there's noise that in there that you don't want, you can um, sort of like silence and mute that layer by just clicking on the on off button there. If it's highlighted, naturally it's on if it's dull it's it's off if you want to choose your sample just click on the sample name and you can then choose a category and in each category is a set of sounds 
And while you're in here, you can actually press channel two and three and four and, and assign different samples to each layer. You don't have to sort of like go come out and go into each one. Then you can select the volume there. You can step through in the the uh, the samples is with these little arrows or you can press the little dice now that dice if i'm in synth analog i'll just go to attacks so i can actually choose baby fm to start with i'll just silence all these other layers just so to demonstrate what i'm doing here sorry too high up the keyboard so I'll just raise that sound so that's the baby FM. Now, if I want to select a different sample, I just press the dice and what it does, it selects a sample within that category of attacks. Now, if I like that and I want to mix it with the rest of them, then I'll just turn all these back on. On the right hand side here, we have a simple uh, two band equalizer in a way because you either cut the low mids or leave them on so this sort of um, brightens the sound you can boost sub octaves as well or cut them or off it turn them off completely and along the bottom here you have your different macros for uh, animate and if I click on this it turns it on and off so that's on filters on put some reverb turn the echo on I want to turn all these on So that's the front page of what you can actually do to your sound. And there's quite a lot there, just in a simple uh, interface. Okay, so on over to the mixer page. This is a simple sort of like mixer, does what it says on the tin. It allows you to individually tweak each layer, the, the sort of uh, stereo separation. So the pans, you can pan it left, right. Uh, you add some space, which is your your reverb and, or your echo and you can add some grit and dirt to the sound so just turn these layers off and you can hear now you see in this layer you have these little red rings around the, uh, the the knob itself now these uh, control the modulation intensity of the appropriate macro that it's assigned to uh, you know in this lower area here and we'll get into macro assignments when we go into the edit page you also have the effects so on the here where we've turned them on with the wet dry knobs we can also adjust them in the effects tab as well down here so your space echo and dirt so you can change the type of uh am i on that channel no i need to turn dirt on that channel and we've got some presets at the bottom to play with on the dirt we also then can change the type echo a modern analog or tape and then do usual delay effects there and we can do reverb and we can change the convolution now convolution gives us a few more parameters to play with as in we've got these um impulse responses so you know we've got an echo plate uh, let's go low end space and when we go and we're going to turn that up 
so it thickens the bottom end i've gone a bit overboard there but it it just thickens the bottom end for you so that's what we get with just the mixer tabs again you can actually sort of do even more sound design from what we had initially from the front page we then go into the mixer so on to the edit page which gives us even more ways to shape your sound um, what is important to remember is this is per layer so if you want to edit a certain channel make sure you are highlighted in the right channel as you see channel one two three and four so if i just scoot back to the main page and i will just silence these other three layers and head back to edit so we're actually just playing with one layer now what i want i'll just raise that sound a little bit so we can not struggling to hear and then on here we can change your pitch up or down 12 semitones you can change the sample start and the random time for the sample start so there's 27 percent chance of but randomness is to the sample start uh, velocity to cut off So obviously the harder you pay, play, the cutoff kicks in more and same to the volume. And we then have your cutoff itself. And you can change, you've got four different um, filters with a valve filter. At the moment the filter's on full can turn it on on off down there now you see this little red line this adjusts the intensity for the filter and what i was going to just going to show is if you click on these arrows here it'll tell you exactly which sort of macro on the bottom you actually are on so i'm on the filter cut off here and if i um just change that and drag down click and hold and drag down you can change the intensity of that little red line and the same goes for the resonance and then you got the filter envelope amount and on the right hand side you have your normal adsr for volume and filters so, and you have this per channel so you've got some great design sound design opportunities we have the last page of animate <clears throat> now i've turned all the layers back on again and what you can do is uh, set, set a step sequencer to sort of des well the destinations on the, on the right hand side here so you can set it to uh the volume your cutoffs and each one is individual and you can have a few different uh, presets so let's go random reducer you can hear that working quantized curve let's go something that's there we go so you can hear that kick in on the on the step sequencer for the sound and, this, and we've got the uh, LFOs on this channel here uh, which adjusts the speed of different of obviously the the, the LFO you got the a normal sign a triangle saw square random you can sync it to tempo um, and obviously re-trigger on every note start and then you can change obviously the intensity of the drift of the LFO if you wish to and whichever channel you wish to add it to so let's just inverse this and say channel one and channel four and we get a different sound altogether so between the animate page the edit the mixer and what we have straight on the main page there is absolutely infinite ways of changing and morphing the sounds so now we've had a little tour through the interface 
let's crack on and have a listen to what these sounds and samples sort of like sound like when you bring them together in a little simple composition. A little ambient electronic track for you there. Uh, sort of like I had to do it in the sort of reminiscent of the style of Neuland, which uh, Peter Bauman and Paul Hasslinger are, are, are sort of like members of. Um, so, what I've done here is I've used a couple of the sounds to create an instant unsettling vibe at the beginning. So, I've used Dream World and Toy Feedback Machine. And as you probably can see from the mixer below here, um, I've added no other external effects, just just to show that uh, inserts absolutely no extra effects on on these channels here, and I've not actually had to do anything with the volume levels, the the samples of that well sort of put together and layered. That there's very little in the way of tweaking volume levels. I had to do all I've done is panned it just to give some space in the sound spectrum. So Dream World sounds like this. And the toy feedback machine. Now, what I'm going to do is just going to show you on Dreamworld. I'm going to have Dreamworld up when I do this. Just wait for it to pop up. There we go. To get that little riser effect, what I've done is use the mod wheel and that's gone through the sound so I'm going to play them both back together and just you can see it smoothly goes through the variations and as it goes through the variations it brings on the intensity so when using sounds from this library just remember there's variations within each snapshot and it's worth experimenting with how they can play into the sound. The next bit to foundation the whole track really was these uh, like bass, real deep sounds. And I've used meditation and phantom droning. Now I'm going to start round about here because obviously this first half is just going to use the same note. So I'm going to just play from here. And as you can see, as I'm playing this through, this bass line, um, well, it's not so more than, not such as a bass line, more of a bass drone, 
I'm moving the mod wheel up and down, and this is what's giving this whole sort of like foundation of the track some movement. So we're going to do the same with Phantom Drone. And I'll just bring Phantom Drone up so you can actually see obviously what's going on. Now, coupled together, that really does add a nice backdrop to build from. And then what we did is we used a, another sound called Communion, along with Clockwork, to provide the uh, melody. Now I brought that up just to show that there was very little in the way of that modulation wheel being moved. All we're doing there is, is basically sticking on the third variation of the sound. And it's exactly the same with Clockwork. It plays exactly the same melody, but I've pitched it down a further octave. Obviously, we put a bit of panning. Now, together, they really do fill out the sonic space. Now, I could have left that gap there, but I thought, no, no, no. I want something sort of to add to the atmosphere and this noise train patch certainly does that. It has a lovely tail on it which blends beautifully with the rest of the track as it goes on. So if I just play this section. you don't notice the tail on that sound which is exactly what you need and then when we come to the sort of like the midpoint and the sort of like tail end of this little sketch i put in a little sequence using the empty cans patch Or a little bit of ratcheting going on there on a simple eighth note rhythm. And when you couple that with all the other uh, sounds, I'll just do that and mute that last one, we get this. So it adds like a percussion to the whole track. You know, there's no percussion in this lab as we, we saw, but you can create a pseudo percussion sound by doing something like this. And then finally, we have the last effect I use, which was the drone and more scary toys. Now, if I just bring that one up, sorry, I just need to nip down here and pop that one up because the little tip here is if you want it to obviously play on variation three, which I've done here, all your sounds start at A. So what you need to do is record the modulation change. And I've done it very early on, so it's actually prepared. As you can see, I've done, done this here as we watch it move. There we go. And so when we come to the part it plays, it's ready.
and that introduces the next part here very nicely. So if I just go from 18. So there we go, a nice little ambient electronic track demonstrating just sounds from this absolutely fantastic library. Low End Toys offers something different to the crowded world of contact sample libraries. It's hard to imagine that these sounds came from toys and toy instruments given their sonic quality. It's something about childhood that sort of like lingers in your mind saying that, well, toys can't make real music. However, 10 Phantom Rooms has certainly proved otherwise given the sonic detail that this library provides. There's literally something for all types of genres and for me the highlights are the deep bass drone sounds as they add instant atmosphere and foundation for any ambient electronic style project as we sort of heard a few moments ago in the composition. Being able to program subtle or even large changes to the sound over a range of three variations gives you more mileage from the sample library. You can design a sound to go from a solo instrument to gradually bring in all layers or even go the opposite way around. There's also options to add effects and filters as you move the model wheel to provide even more sonic variation. I really enjoy taking this instrument for a spin, especially cooking up some of my own patches using the samples from this library. It really is so easy to do. Even if you aren't into sort of sound design, simply hitting those dice allows you to come up with a sonic blend that is pleasing, or if you're after this, and even displeasing to the ear. I would like to thank 10 Phantom Rooms for sending low end toys across to review, it's very much appreciated. And for you dear viewers, remember to subscribe to the channel to keep up to date with all the latest releases in the music software world, and remember, stay creative, stay sonic, and I'll catch you in the next video.